a welcome to the Inspiring Inkin Facebook page. I'm Amanda Fowler. Welcome to Craft and Chat Tuesday the 11th of August. Time is whizzing by. If you're here can you say hello please um, and I will check on my iPad to make sure I'm live in the right place. How are we on this lovely Tuesday? see make sure I've got my volume down just taking a minute to to catch up hmm let's see if you're here thank you the page is just not refreshing Oh, I've got a notification. Apparently I'm live. Looks like I'm here. Yay! So my mum's here. Michelle's here. Sarah's here. Sarah's saying it's too hot in France. Pretty hot in England too, currently. Um, Belinda's here. Marion's here. Anne's here. Fantastic. Good. You're all here. And lots more people joining as well. So, have you brought a cool drink, or in Marion's case, a cup of coffee? Um, the whole of Europe seems to be having a heat wave at the moment, so we're all warm, and those down under are suffering with rain and, and chilliness. So, I hope you have a beverage of choice. Mine had ice cubes in it, which have now melted. Elderflower cordial, if you're interested. It's very nice. Hi, Roz. Hi, Carol. Nice to see you. Brilliant. So how are we? So since we started off talking about beverages, what is your beverage of choice on this Tuesday afternoon slash evening slash morning? depending on where you are in the world. Um, the USA aren't in the house yet, but I'm, I'm sure they'll be coming at some point. So how are we doing? Um, I was about to say since last week, because normally it's a week, isn't it? That, you know, I see you every Tuesday. Um, but obviously I was here on Thursday, so it's been less than a week. So how are we doing? Julia's here. Hi, Faye. <laughs> Marion's saying to, for us to enjoy the warm weather. It's Isn't it interesting? So, downstairs, it's currently inside. It's 27 and a half degrees Celsius. Um, I don't know what it is outside, um, but yesterday the car was registering 32 and 33. Um... I've got all the windows open and there is a breeze just starting so I'm hopeful it will kind of calm, it will start cooling down. Um, but if I was on holiday, as in, you know, somewhere else rather than in my house, I would be loving this, absolutely loving it because it's on holiday. But because I'm at home and because I'm supposed to be working, it's not so much fun. And I guess if I had an air conditioned office, then that would be okay too, wouldn't it? Um, but air conditioning in a residential house in the UK is fairly rare. Um, so we just have to cope with having all the windows open and hope there is a breeze. There hasn't been a breeze the last few days though. Um, it's just the, the air's been still. Um, but we, Brian and I were chatting earlier about, you know, at what point is my boss, that would be me, <laughs> going to tell me I can stop working because it's too hot. And apparently the health and safety executive don't have a too hot rating, they only have a too cold rating. So obviously I just have to decide when I'm going to give up because it's too warm. So let's have a look. Oh right, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read some of these beverages. This sounds really good. 
So, crushed limes and mint cordial. What do you do, Belinda? Do you chop them or put them in a food processor or do you smash them? How, how do you do that? Um, Faye's having iced lemon water. Hi, Jackie. Julia is just back from her x-ray. What did you actually break, Julia? Um, <laughs> Sarah's drinking Pims. That's delicious. Um, if I wasn't actually talking to you guys, then yeah, that, that might go really well. Ros has got iced water. Oh, Sarah's saying she can't find any Pims in France. Oh no, you have to come back. See us. Oh, cool and misty in Devon. Interesting. Interesting. We've not seen any of the thunderstorms that they keep talking about. So, hi Joanne, hi Hazel, hi Janet, hi Kimberly, my daughter is in the house, woo! Um, <laughs> Joanne, hello, finally. Good afternoon, good afternoon to you too. Oh, so it was your, so it was your wrist, I was just wondering Julia, I know we talked about it earlier today. Um, but I wasn't sure whether or not you'd broken anything else. So, because sometimes wrists can be funny. Um, you end up breaking all sorts of weird bones in your hand. Helen's here and Carrie's here. Just finished an ice cream after picking damsons. Damsons are my favourite fruit. I have a damson tree in the garden that Brian bought me for an anniversary. Um, and we had a bumper crop last year. I think it was 18 kilos. I think we've got about 18 damsons on the tree this year. I, why does it do that? Every year you have a real bumper crop and then you have nothing. So it's a good job we've got some in the freezer. Oh, Belinda's saying there's nothing, she's not making a clever thing. It's a pre-bottled Robinson's drink. Oh, I'll have to look, look that up. And tropical fruit squash with lemonade, says Hazel. That sounds delicious too. Actually, I had some ginger ale at the weekend. That was really nice. I'd forgotten how much I love ginger ale. Um, oh, and Kerry's saying, best year for 10 years for our damsons. Fantastic. And Jen's here too. Okay, so my plan is not to keep you here too long today. Um, basically because I'm going to melt. <laughs> I've got lights on and all sorts. Um, and, you know, you might want to be going out and putting your feet up in the sunshine, perhaps. Or hiding out if it's cold and misty in Devon. Um, Joanne's asking if my daughter takes after me with my crafting. Well, she does. She does do crafting. She started sewing. Um, but she's an amazing baker and cake decorator as well, so that's good. Right, okay, so let's, what, what things I've got to talk about. Okay, so I've got something new in the house which I'm very excited about. I got a delivery yesterday. Um, I've got to announce the prize draw from last week's three, um, three prizes for... Um, <laughs> what am I talking about? The three prizes from the launch videos last week, so I've got those to announce. I've got a couple of cards to make, but super quick. Um, yeah, and kind of that's it. So, um, two things first. First thing is, um, I always show you cards that I've received in the post because they're so lovely and it's really nice to see other people's cards. So this one is from the lovely Sally. Um, Sally's actually in my team. Um, and this is actually stamped on shimmery white cardstock and it's really cool. So that's a really lovely card. And then this is from the lovely Sarah who is also in my team. And she made me this card, which also is amazing. It's got so much texture and I love these little gems. I'm going to be taking notes of where she's placed them because I, ah, see, crafters, we learn all the time. I always put them one 
Let me, let me bring it a bit closer. I always put them one in the space, but she's put two, like two there and two up here, two up there. And I thought that was really cool. So, you know, there you go. So there's a, there's a thing. So let me show you the prizes. So I had three of these. These are little mini guillotines. They are very cool. And ooh, I had quite a few entries. Thank you for those of you that entered um, via email as well. So I had quite a few entries because not everyone can leave comments. It's, it's kind of really strange. Um, sometimes on Facebook, you, you can't leave a comment. Or, or whatever. So anyway, so I put everyone's name into a into a hat and drew it out. So three prize winners. So the first one is a Roz. Your <laughs> your post-it note got a bit crumpled. So the first one is Roz. The second one is Jen. Jen Lancaster. And the third one is Jackie Barsky. So, I will be popping these in the post to you um, this week. So, congratulations, congratulations. Um, hi to Pam and Anne. Jenny's saying it's nine degrees C where they are, so that's fine. <laughs> Joanne sat in front of the fan. <laughs> yeah, I haven't got a fan. I've, it, yeah, we need one. And I've got green fingernails. Yeah, green fingernails. So this is my colour changing polish. Let me see. I've just stuck it in my, there you go. I've just stuck it in my drink. So look how fast it changed. Ooh. Yeah, look. There you go. It's it. So it's it's blue most of the time. But not now. It's going going green. Oh Jen says she never wins anything. Oh, brilliant. Fabulous. Okay, so actually, isn't that cool? All three prize draw winners are here today. Yay! Awesome. Hi, Carol. Hi, Andrea. Lovely to, lovely to see you here. Okay, so I've got that. What do I need to tell you? What do I need to remind you about? Okay, so if you are on the August Craft Along. We're playing with snowflakes. It's next Tuesday, the 18th. So it's, it's kind of early. It's because of the way the Tuesdays fall in August. So um, yeah, we're full on Christmas and um, your kits have arrived or have arrived, have been sent. Um, if you place an order in August, you can take part in the September Craft Along. Um, you need to use the host code, it's on my blog um, and it's on all my emails and everything so you should always be able to see it there. Um, if you are placing an, org uh, an order in August and you earned bonus codes in July, so if you placed an order over £45 in July you will have bonus codes, you need to fish them out and copy and paste them into your order. So don't forget to do that. Um, so use your bonus codes because you know they run out at the end of August, so you don't want to miss out. Um, Jenny's saying that my <laughs> is my nail polish changing with my mood? No, it's just hot. Um, Janice, hi Janice. Did Janice, did you get the envelope that I sent to you the other day with the forms and the letters in. Hopefully you did. Um, yeah, this is this is currently known as, as the jungle room. <laughs> but 
with the crazy wallpaper. Um, yeah, I, I really like it. And Sharon's here as well. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to get the camera turned around. I am going to be showing you this little thing here. Which I'm so excited, it's finally here. Um, I'm only going to be quickly giving you a quick run round and a few hints and tips about it. I'm going to be doing a proper, a proper video. That's crazy isn't it, this is a proper video. But I'm going to be doing a YouTube video, pure YouTube video, um, about it as well. So you'll be able to see it fully in action. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of a hint and tip. Because if you join my team now, so that's joining my team during August, you can put this in your starter kit. So your starter kit is £99 and you can pick £130 worth of products. So this is 112 so you can put um, the machine in and get some other bits and pieces. It's crazy. Why would you not do that if you need a cut and emboss machine? I've got to learn the new technology, no, the new terminology, the new words because I'm so used to using certain words for certain things. I'm learning. Okay. Fab, brilliant. So Janice has got a post, that's really good. And Jenny got the embossing machine with her code. Yeah, so Jenny, you're a demonstrator obviously because you've got it in pre-order, which is how I've got mine. So, I'm gonna cover you over and I am going to turn you around. Huh, okay, let's turn it all orange. And turn this around. And I'm actually going to oh, move all the wires. <laughs> right. Just, you guys are just going to have to stay there a second. I've got my wires in a tangle. And you really don't need to see all the wires. Right. Hopefully. Ta-da! Right. Let's see. Let's see what you can see. Okay, so I'm just going to move some of these things over. Okay, so this is the new machine. Um, and the first question that everybody is going to ask <laughs> is... How big is it compared to a big shot? So, I have brought my big shot to. I don't know. So, so it's it's sort of a base footprint is narrower and not as long. Obviously, you've got the you've got the handle. Um, so I'm hoping that you can kind of you can kind of see. Once this is open, I'm just going to move that up a bit. Once this is open, and I'll talk about the opening bit in a minute, it is about the same size. Okay, so they are comparable in size, basically because the, the aperture here is pretty much the same. But, obviously for storage purposes, this is going to fit into a smaller space. Um, weight wise I don't think there's much difference I haven't actually weighed it though so I don't know for sure right, let me move that grid paper out of the way okay so it comes with a little spanner 
and you have to let me just that's not going to come out is it you have to put the handle in and twist it on okay tighten it up and then it comes with all these things so all these things so the first thing is it comes with a quick start guide so it's called a stamping cut and emboss okay and you've got important things what's in it attaching the handle how to use it and it has got a three year warranty apart from obviously the cutting plates so the first thing that you need to know you need to know is you pull it ooh, pull it out and it clicks that ooh was my iPad just falling off the table but I saved it we're all right so I'm going to move my iPad somewhere over here let's see that was exciting I did not need that excitement in my life okay so um it opens like this and I'm going to tilt it so you can see there there's the hole and inside that's where the rollers go so you've got your instructions and then you've got with your original kit you have got plate number one which is for using with dies and embossing folders. Plate number two, which is um, for use with the thin dies. Plate number three, um, which are your cutting plates. And look, I haven't cut anything with them yet. Let me just straighten you up a bit. And plate number four um, is a specialty plate. So let me explain how this works. So on every one of these plates, there are sort of rules, basically. So if you're using a thin die, which is basically what most of our dies are now. You use plate one, plate two, and you sandwich it between the two number three plates. Okay. If you are embossing, you don't use plate number two. You get your embossing folder and actually, Here's one I made earlier. So you get your embossing folder and it says you use plate one and you sandwich it in between two number three plates. Okay, so I'm gonna run this through just to show you. What I do want to show you is there is a little gap. Yeah, so it, it's not tight in there. But make sure it's straight as it goes in, as otherwise it will catch on the edges. And with all embossing folders, hinge first. And the reason for that is the pressure builds up and builds up. And if you've got the hinge here, it can pop the hinge. Okay? So make sure everything is nice and straight. Put it in. Wind it through. Da -da -da. And there you have some beautiful embossed snowflakes. So this is a standard die. It's not a 3D die, okay? A 3D embossing folder. Standard embossing folder. If you have a 3D embossing folder, 
and you can tell the difference. So if you've got both sorts in your stash, if it says Sizzix, it's an old style. I'll tell you about those in a minute. If it doesn't say Sizzix on there, it only says Stampin' Up, you need to follow this information. Using with a 3D embossing folder, you have plate number one and plate number four. That's this one. So this is your specialty plate for your 3D embossing folders. So let's pop that in there. So again, seam side first, not a clear plate, a number four plate. And then you're going to wind it through. Okay. And then you get the lovely A lovely lovely brick embossing thing so that is the new plate so if you're buying them now they'll all be this new style okay if you've got some of these old ones you can still use them but you just need to just put a clear plate on the top because these are thicker and if you try it with that grey plate it is too thick and it won't go through your machine okay there you go so absolutely you can use your old style 3d embossing plates but just use a clear plate to emboss okay I'm not going to do any die cutting because I don't want to mess my plates up yet um, I'm going to do that obviously with my um, YouTube video but if you've got any questions about the machine then let me know there is a mini machine coming but we don't know or when it's coming we haven't got that information yet but yes I will be getting one because anything in a miniature size has got my name on it oh right Right. Okay. So, let's do some stamping now. Let's get my grid paper down. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do, let me move that is a bring in since I, since we were talking about tools i thought i would bring in the stamparatus and last week sarah mentioned about hinge step stamping with the stamparatus and um i'm going to show you how to do that but first I'm going to show you how to make a super, super, super quick Christmas card using the owls. And I think Kerry's here. This, the owls, me buying the owls, that was Kerry's fault. <laughs> she made a lovely card. And yeah, definitely her fault. So, um, let me get this out. Ooh. okay so I am going to use these lovely little owls and the Merry Christmas okay now when I ink up um, my Stamparatus I always put a stamp set underneath so um, it brings the level of the Stamparatus up. I appreciate that that is going to be a little bit distracting for you guys. So let me just stick that under there as well. 
hopefully that won't be too distracting. So how many of you have seen the Stamparatus in action? How many of you have got one? I'm sure lots of you have. Um, so this is, let me move that out of the way, this is the, the Stamparatus itself. Um, this base is magnetic and underneath you have magnets. Um, I have put duct tape <laughs> on my magnets. Um, these magnets, they're earth magnets and they're really, really strong, but they're really fragile. So never ever put them on the table together because they'll smash in together. Um, if you want to see, once you've seen today's um, video, if you want to see more Stamparatus videos, um, if you just go over to YouTube or my blog either and write, type in Stamparatus, um, there's lots of different videos. So there are videos about what you need to know before you get it out the box. There's different videos on hinge stamping and all sorts of different techniques that you can do with the Stamparatus. It is a really cool piece of kit. But the best thing for me about the Stamparatus is I can do multiple projects really quickly. Um, and that's why I would always use it for my Christmas cards um, because it just makes them so easy. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put my cardstock in and because I've got red rubber stamps with foam on, I don't need a foam mat and I'm just going to pin that down with my magnet and then I'm just going to position these oh, where I want them. Look, that is so cool. So, I am just going to put that there, that like that. So I've positioned them where I want them, just going to lift them up with my clear plate. Uh, I'm going to get my early espresso ink pad and just lightly go over the top and then press it down. And it's done. Now, I can, this is what I'm saying about doing multiples. You just put in another piece of cardstock, ink it up, and it's done. And it'll be perfect every time. And if you miss a spot, you can re ink it and stamp it back down again. Okay, so. I'm just going to move that out of the way for now. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. And I am just going to make this card. So I have got two markers. So one's real red and one's old olive. And I've got a blender pen. Now, blender pens we have talked about before, but these are so cool. They've got glycerin and other magical chemicals in them. And basically, you can colour with any colour of ink using a blender pen. So you can get the ink either from a lid by squashing the ink pad, or you can press an ink pad onto a plastic surface or a plate, something like that, and lift it up there. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is use the ink that is already in that stamped image just to pull it out and just give a tiny hint of colour. So I'm just doing that. And then I am going to use the marker to colour in their hats. And I'm going for alternate red, green, red, green. There we go. Get my 
Tombow out. Do a bit of matting and layering. So it's going on an old olive mat. And a real red card base. And there is a super quick Christmas card um, that is going to um, be yeah so you can you can make so many of these cards so super quickly um, obviously you could bling this up you could put gems on it you could put um, glitter and snow but equally that is a truly handmade card and you know that is is great i i love it and i love this little owl jumping off so um let me whilst whilst you're just looking at that let me just check on these uh messages oh and drink some more of this elderflower before <laughs> before um, I lose my voice. Um, Jackie's got a stamper artist. Marion has. Roz has. Julia's never seen it. Oh, Julia, you do not know what you're missing. It is so awesome. Um, Belinda's got one. Joanne's got one but not used it much. Hopefully you'll use it a bit more. And Hazel's the same. I'm back. Hello, I'm back and back and back. Oh dear me. My phone is really hot. I'm thinking that it's it's cut out. Okay, so I'm just hoping that Facebook saved that video. Right. So I'm just going to wait just for a second or two whilst um, whilst everyone finds us again. So I am here. Hello, hello. Ooh. I am here, but I've managed to lose a stamp in all that kerfuffle. That's not very clever. Okay. So, if you are here, can you leave me a message? Say hello. That would be very cool. And we will get started in just one second. You know, after all this time and my camera working really well and my phone working really well. I'm a bit, I was a bit worried. Okay. Right, so, whew. okay, so we are now going to do the hinge stamping. So basically, stamping up is not unique in the sense that they have a stamping platform. But our stamping platform is unique because of these uh, little bits these are called the hinges and what it means that we can do is we can put it put the stamparatus in and just stamp but we can then lift the stamparatus up and move it along and we can get things in a beautiful line so that is what i am going to do 
So I am going to use the tree first. And I'm going to position it just there. Okay. And I'm going to press this down so I can lift it up. And then I'll just put that there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this stamparatus down a bit so you can see a bit more of it. So I'm going to ink it up just like we did before. And I'm going to stamp it down. And then I'm going to lift up the plate and in order to remove the plate it has to be straight up and down lift it up and I'm going to move it over one one spot one hinge I'm not going to re-ink it and then I'm going to press it down again so this is a second generation stamp so it's going to be a paler variation okay Lift it up, move it along one. I'm going to ink it up. And press it down. Lift it up. And then I'm just going to move my magnet down the other way. And then that is going to go there. And obviously I slightly misjudged that because that gap there and there isn't quite right. But I'll fix it in a minute. Okay, so we've got all of these lovely trees all in a line. Now what we're going to do is take that stamp off. And get the other stamp which is here and move that back now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to position this over the top now I find that I'm much better if I'm looking over the top and looking directly down so that I can see where it needs to line up and it doesn't have to be perfect basically this is like a watercolor effect on the tree so don't worry if it's not completely in all the lines okay so that's going on there like that press it down And then we're going to start inking it up. So whilst I get my other ink pad, I will check on the messages because obviously everyone's finding me again. Let's have a look. <laughs> Jackie sent, said she spent a fortune yesterday, but that means you've got pretty stamps coming. Louise is saying she needs one as she can move the plates to different positions. Yeah. Um, yeah, Louise, that for me is, is the brilliant thing about this. Now, I was um, part, there were a lot of demonstrators that were part of a team that were looking at designing this stamping platform. And this is one of the things that we really wanted to be able to do was to, to not keep moving the stamp, but to be able to move the plates. Sarah's saying she's a visual learner. Check out my other video, Sarah, as well, because there's loads of different things that you can do with it. Um, good night, Jenny. And hi, Soraya. And Hazel. Okay, so, Old Olive ink pad. I'm going to ink this up. And this is one of the um, watercolour wash type stamps so it has um different tones with the stamp okay so i'm going to do exactly the same 
So this second one has got, is the second generation. And then lift that one up. Press it down. And then your second generation. And I love doing this because it makes it look like you've got trees all in a line but standing behind one another. Okay, there you go. So that is the hinge stamping method. Um, one of my favourite things to do is to do it this way round with a sentiment and repeat it down. So if you've got a big happy birthday and you can repeat it down, that looks really cool. So let me see. I'm just going to trim that down slightly because that's going to annoy me. <laughs> but it's not even on both sides. So, oh, she says, yeah, and the trimmer is here. My trimmer needs a clean, actually. So, how much do I need to take off? Quarter of an inch. Yeah. Whoop. Which means I've got to take a sliver off the bottom. And, oop. Sliver off the top. Ta-da! Okay. And then I've got another old olive layer. So again, I'm going to just trim that down. So because I've taken quarter of an inch off this, I'm taking quarter of an inch off this. And you'll see what a difference it makes in a second. Now, what I've done is I have stamped the sentiment onto a strip. This is a three quarter inch strip of vellum. Now, I love vellum. This is a Clasters vellum cardstock. And um, it's, it's thick. So you can heat emboss it, but with the weather that we're having at the moment, I just stamped it and left it on the window ledge. And this is our normal ink and it's dried. Okay, so normally it would take hours, but it's dried really nicely, so that's that's good. So I'm going to pop that one over the top like this. So all I'm going to do is decide where I want it, so just there, and then fold over the vellum. Oop. Snip a bit of that off, and then I'm just gonna stick it down. I'm, I'm just gonna use um, a glue dot on each end. Nobody's gonna see this bit, um, and I'm gonna stick it all down with Tombow in a minute. So let's just get it where I want it to go. There we go. somewhere I've got these and these are new gems they're called wonderful gems and um, they they've got glitter in them um, and so there's clear ones and you can see some of them have got loads of glitter in and some of them haven't got very much glitter in but I'm just gonna use my scissors actually and just pop a little bit down there like that. Okay. There we go. Right, I will finish off the card in a second, but let's just have a look at the messages. Okay, so Jenny, the outlines, um, she's asking about the colours I've used. So the outlines were early espresso. 
and then the inside was old olive and the red is real red um and jack is asking what do i clean my trimmer with um i just use a microfiber cloth with a bit of soapy water um basically i'll show you actually i don't mind showing you my grubby trimmer this is glue it's probably tombow um so i'll just just give it a, a quick wipe over um, and the glue will just lift off. Um, this track um, does get paper fluff in it as well. So I just use my little spatula or um, a bit of cardstock and just clean out the paper fluff. You can see it just gets a bit dusty in there. Or if you've got a brush, a brush would work. You don't want to use anything sharp in there though. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Let's just pop this one down. And there we go. So there is my second card using the hinge step method. So look, two Christmas cards all finished ready for my stack <laughs> i've got a box with all my christmas cards in and as i'm making them for um events and things i just keep keep them there and then when we get to christmas i've got a great big stack already made so hopefully um that has shown you a little bit about the stamping cut and emboss machine you've seen um, the stamparatus and some quick Christmas cards as well so does anybody have any questions can I help with anything else um, and does anybody have um, any questions for different you know different ideas different things that you want to see you're being very lovely about my cards, thank you. Yeah, very quick cards, absolutely, Ros. Um, and, you know, for me, that's what I want when I've got, a, when I'm making Christmas cards. I do make special Christmas cards, obviously, um, but I also want a lot of quick Christmas cards that I'm going to enjoy making. That's the whole point of card making, that we actually have fun whilst we're doing it. So, you know, if they're really complicated and take hours, then I'm not going to enjoy it as much as having a great big stack. Good. I am so pleased that you have enjoyed that. Um, and, um, and saying that sorry Debbie's saying that she likes it best nice with the the wider border absolutely and you could do the same with the owls um too and yes quick <laughs> definitely quick Julia brilliant okay well I am going to love you and leave you um to the rest of your Tuesday thank you so much for joining me and um I will see you again soon Remember, if you've got bonus codes, make sure you use them during August. Um, I would hate you to miss out. Okay, so take care and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.